Hi guys! If you want to improve your capsicles, today I'm showing you how to make them two different ways using the molding method and dipping method with all the magical tips and tricks so you can prevent common mistakes such as cracked shells, bumpy chocolate coating, cake that falls off the stick and so much more including a firm dough recipe so you can chill out and create beautiful designs like these different ice cream inspired cakesicles including this realistic strawberry shortcake ice cream bar and other shapes like Mickey and Minnie because with ice cream anything is popsicle and speaking of ice cream, that's the biggest hint in this video because we're having another giveaway to celebrate changing the name of my channel and to give a big thank you for all your support. While I tell you about the giveaway, enjoy this mini vlog of my visit to the Museum of Ice Cream. There are going to be two winners, each receiving their very own pair of these ice cream heels that so many of you guys ask where I get them. They are actually custom made by my mom. So for your chance to win your very own pair, enter by subscribing to my channel here on YouTube and follow me on my Instagram. Then to confirm your entry, leave a comment below with your shoe size and Instagram name. I will be announcing the scoop on Instagram Friday, June 3rd, which means you have two weeks to enter and you can rock a sweet and stylish pair of shoes. Thank you to the Sugar Magic family with extra sprinkles and a cherry on top. Whether you choose to dip or mold your cakesicles, a firm dough recipe is the foundation for a smoothly dipped surface without falling off the stick and also packs the cake into a compact layer. Oftentimes you may see different hacks, for example on TikTok, using all these pre-made snack cakes. Although they may be a shortcut, from my experience, this whole Entenmann's pound cake only made about three large cakesicles, which isn't much at all, and it's more expensive. So why not just break the cake instead? And I find the result with the Pillsbury brand are the most moist. You can prepare this base recipe with any Pillsbury flavor that you like. Just by switching out the flavor of mix and keeping everything else the same. The only exception is Funfetti. I'm only testing it here to show you why it's not my favorite and an alternative way to achieve it. Here I'm adding one box of mix to my mixing bowl as well as three quarters a cup of water half a cup of milk, and the golden ingredient is four tablespoons of melted butter to create a firm and smooth texture, allowing the dough to come together just like magic. Instead of preparing with oil like on the box instructions, which can cause leaking, separating, or a more crumbly texture overall. So remember here that butter is better. Last, I'm pouring in our two eggs, then give the batter a mix, mix, mix until well combined. And back to why I don't recommend Funfetti for this, the first tip is that you should use a plain yellow cake mix instead. You'll see the difference once we bake it and form the dough. When mixing, I beat everything together just until all the powder disappears and take over by hand mixing with a rubber spatula to help prevent over mixing. Next, you want to pour your batter into an 8 by 12 inch pan that has been greased, floured, and lined with parchment paper so there is absolutely no sticking. Here on my channel, in my cake pop tutorial, I also stress to you guys how very important it is not to over bake or brown your cake and to completely avoid those baking instructions on the back of the box. They are way overestimated, resulting in an over browned cake. Instead, wrap the temperature to 325 and bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. Some of you guys have asked me what to do if your cake doesn't seem ready by that time. Since everyone's oven is different, you'll want to keep checking until it has passed the toothpick test. That is your number one indicator. The key is not to over bake, but the toothpick must be clean. As you can see, even with baking the funfetti correctly, it has browned more than it should have and that's because the cake base is a white cake which is more likely to dry out and brown quicker. 
When it is time to remove the cake from the oven, it is key to immediately begin the process of sweating your cake to lock in all the maximum moisture. To do that, cover the top and sides with aluminum foil while it is still in the pan and hot out of the oven, and we're letting this sweat for 30 minutes. You should see all the condensation on the foil once it is removed to know that you did this correctly. After the 30 minutes have passed and the cake is cool enough to safely remove from the pan, it is essential to continue part two of the sweating process by placing plastic wrap on top and flipping it over onto a board. It should slide right out from properly greasing your pan. Then wrap the top and edges with some plastic wrap and seal everything up in two large Ziploc bags. Shimmy both ends inside the bags and allow the cake to continue to sweat overnight. This is another common question I receive. If you've ever heard of that saying, things are better with time, that applies to this too. The longer you wait, the smoother and firmer the dough will be, so you definitely want to be patient and leave enough time to complete this step. It is now the next day. What happens next during our Funfetti experiment is going to be a bit shocking. I also prepped a plain yellow cake the same exact way to compare. When unwrapping the plastic, you're going to notice the cake is sticky yet very easy to slice into, which is from all that sweating. And I'm slicing the cake so that it's able to fit inside my mixer. The Funfetti looks so pretty and colorful right now, but in just a minute, it's not going to look that way anymore. Throw all that sticky cake into a stand mixer with the paddle attachment. It will do all the work for you. And watch what happens to all the colors. It's similar to mixing a whole rainbow of paint colors together. It turns gray, right? This dough also turns gray. It's based on your preference, but it doesn't look too pretty or appetizing when you bite into your casicle and see gray inside. So for all the Funfetti fans, let's try this another way with the yellow cake. The stand mixer is my favorite go-to method because it is more powerful and kneads the dough more effectively. I find it doesn't come together nearly as well in a food processor, and the hand mixer takes a lot more time and work, so the stand mixer is the way to go. First start mixing on medium speed with the paddle attachment. As the crumbs break down, they may stick to the sides of your mixing bowl, so I stop the mixer in between and scrape down the sides with a rubber spatula to ensure everything gets worked into that dough. After scraping your bowl, you can increase the speed a bit. The goal is to keep mixing until all those small crumbs form into larger pieces that eventually pull away from the sides of the bowl. The mixer will thud up and down as the dough comes together. The goal is to get out of that stage where you see all those small crumbs, otherwise it will remain a cracky dough which won't pack together nicely for the cakesicles. This is exactly how it should look when ready for the next step. It's smooth and firm like this when pressed together without having to add any frosting. Here I'm showing you how to achieve a more colorful and vibrant Funfetti. Grab your favorite sprinkles. These are Sweet Tooth Fairy Rainbow Jimmies and drop a few spoonfuls in there. It is going to look and taste a lot better. Personally, I find the yellow cake is more flavorful and tasty for cake pops and cakesicles than the white cake. Give that a quick whirl to mix in the sprinkles and transform this into a Funfetti dough. Now it is all set for shaping and molding your cake sickles. I prefer to start working with my dough as soon as possible after melting my chocolate since it's the most moldable and easiest to work with. All you need to do is wrap it up in plastic and set it aside. There's no need to refrigerate if you are planning on using it that same day. But if you need the dough for another day, you can refrigerate it. Just allow the dough to come back to room temperature before using, otherwise it will be difficult to mold. Right before we start melting our chocolate with the proper melting method, I wanted to show you a quick trick for cleaning your mold so that your cakesicles appear shiny instead of dull. After washing and drying the molds, I'm taking a clear vodka. This is the Everclear, which is the higher proof. 
I pour a small amount on a paper towel, just enough to dampen it, and wipe the inside of your silicone cakesicle molds. This removes any leftover residue that can cause the chocolate to appear dull instead of the shiny look that we want. And I'm also cleaning the decorative molds that are being used for any chocolate decorations. Keep in mind, if your silicone molds are new, to insert a popsicle stick right through the slits beforehand. Sometimes the slits on the new molds aren't opened all the way, making it hard to put the stick through, and we don't want to struggle with that when we start molding. As for melting the chocolate, I have Merkin's brand chocolate melts. This is a peanut butter flavor. It is perfect for the color of the ice cream cone without having to add candy coloring. Feel free to mix in a candy color if you want instead. For the first round in the microwave, I start with 30 seconds. For some reason, the peanut butter melts easier, but I'm showing the same process that applies to any color. After the first 30 seconds, I stir the melts and allow the heat of the bowl to do some of the work to avoid overheating the chocolate. Keep stirring until the melting activity slows down. Then you're going to continue in 10 second intervals until the chocolate is completely melted. Since this chocolate is being used for molding and not dipping, you don't want the consistency to be too loose like it would be for a dipping consistency, but it does need to be slightly thinned out so that it is fluid enough to coat the molds. My favorite thinning agents are refined coconut oil or Easy Thin, which are similar to Paramount Crystals. Just be sure to check with your customers if there are no allergies to coconut oil or nuts. I'm mixing a spoonful of the coconut oil in with the chocolate until all the clumps dissolve. If it needs more melting, check up on the temperature first. Merkin's brand should be no higher than 90 degrees, otherwise white spots can form on the chocolate after it sets. Feel free to zap in the microwave for another 5 seconds if you still see clumps. For the purple popsicles, I mixed a combination of Chef Master candy coloring in violet and pink, one drop each, until I reached my desired shade. I mentioned earlier that I used peanut butter for the cone. Another alternative is Color Mill in the shade Caramel if you prefer to color your own. Let's get molding. For the technique, I drop a couple spoonfuls into a cavity and pick up the molds to rotate and thoroughly coat all the edges. I work in one continuous direction instead of going back and forth to keep the coating smooth. The only part you're not going to coat with chocolate is the portion in the front where the slot is. I keep that open for now and fill it in later on to prevent cracks around the stick area. I go around three to four times to create a thick enough shell and I forgot to mention that for molding the chocolate is at 90 degrees. Keeping that slot open will make it a lot easier to insert the stick without cracking the chocolate. Tap your mold on the counter to settle out any excess. If there's a lot of extra in there you can dump it out but I feel I didn't need to. The importance of keeping the chocolate at the right consistency so it has that balance of being fluid enough to flow yet still thick enough to make an opaque shell allows you to apply that first layer without a brush. If you're having a hard time tilting the mold to coat the edges, no worries, we are going to reinforce that. Here I'm showing you exactly what you don't want to do. This chocolate is thinned out way too much, making the coat super sheer. I'm coating my popsicle molds the same exact way. Since there is candy coloring in this chocolate, it's slightly on the thinner side from the oil, so it is best to use less thinning agent than usual. Once you are finished with the first layer, go ahead and insert your popsicle sticks, but don't push them in all the way yet, just enough to hold them in as a placeholder. These gold glitter popsicle sticks are my absolute favorite to dress up any theme. I will be sure to link the sticks, mold, and all the supplies in the description box below. It is time to pop the mold in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes. Then the next step is to reinforce any spots that are more thin. The gravity pulls the chocolate towards the bottom and away from the sides, so make sure to thoroughly coat the edges. 
I brush a nice coat without piling it on because the cake needs a neat surface to fit inside without being too thick or bumpy. When approaching the area where we left the opening for the slot, apply the chocolate to the sides and work around the stick, but avoid putting any chocolate directly on the stick. Once the reinforcement layer is complete, chill for another 10 minutes in the fridge right before adding your cake. It should look something like this when it's done. It has been 10 minutes in the fridge and the fun part is filling with the Funfetti cake. Grab a chunk of dough and shape into somewhat of a log so that it is easier to spread out. Remembering that the cake dough should be at room temperature and push the stick in when the cake is spread into an even layer. One of my other tips is to make another slot in the front by adding more cake and pushing with your fingers to create a cutout portion there without any dough. To give you an idea of how much to fill, you don't want cake to overflow the top. For example, the mint chocolate chip made with the molding method is more contoured, while the pink cakesicle made with the dipping method has a wider shape. This is because you need less cake for the molding method to leave enough room for the chocolate layers in the mold. So if you want a lot more cake, the dipping method is more for you. You will really enjoy working with this dough. It's firm so even when you push the sticks in, the dough layer doesn't break apart while also being easy to flatten and spread. Last but not least, let's finish them off by closing up the back. First I'm demonstrating not doing this the right way by not adding enough chocolate. Although there is coverage, I left it too shallow. You'll see that especially around the outline that I'm not filling it to the top and leaving too much space. So when you scrape it off, there's not enough to scrape so it sinks in. And here I'm scraping too hard, leaving marks on the surface. The right way is to fill that slot in the front first with several spoons of chocolate and push it around with a spoon, working quickly so the chocolate doesn't set, and continue to add more while slightly overflowing the cavity. Then I'm taking a small icing scraper to smooth out the excess without pressing too hard and finish by cleaning up the sides. Although this is the back of the cakesicle, this part should look clean and neat as well for a nice presentation. One last time, this goes in the fridge for 20 minutes to completely set all the layers and I definitely suggest wearing gloves when handling the cakesicles so no fingerprints get on the surface of the chocolate. Gently peel from top to bottom and push the stick through the slot. These cakesicles with the molding method are shiny, gorgeous, sleek, and crack free. Now that you are familiar with the molding method, another way to make fabulous cakesicles is with the dipping method, especially for unique molds like this Mickey, which technically wasn't even a cakesicle mold, just a random popsicle mold from Amazon. Aside from molds, you'll need a small amount of melted chocolate, some popsicle sticks, and the room temperature cakesicle dough. You can start by grabbing a larger chunk of dough and filling the cavity halfway. The most important tip is to pack the dough tightly so that it is smooth and compact otherwise your dough will have cracks or the cakesicle could fall apart which won't be good for the dipping method. Then I'm pushing the stick in through the slot and applying some melted chocolate directly on top of the stick. The chocolate acts as a cement or glue and anchors it securely inside the cake so it does not fall off the stick just like a cake pop. And for the final layer, press the dough on top to fill the rest of the mold. As you push down, some of the melted chocolate will move around, which is completely fine. Everything will bond together and it won't be seen after dipping. The Mickey Mouse ice cream design was my favorite. It's not made especially for cakesicles, so it was a bit challenging, but we made it work. Place a large ball of dough on Mickey's face and press down to spread to the ears and create an even layer. It is especially important to tightly pack the dough in this mold with the Mickey shape. 
This popsicle mold wasn't designed to hold the popsicle stick up straight, so I balanced Mickey by lining him up with another cakesicle mold to rest the stick straight across and added the melted chocolate on the stick just as we did before and filled to the top. The ears are the hardest part to get into, so I give the cake a nudge with my knuckles. This part is optional. I like to smooth out any imperfections by putting plastic wrap over the cake and pressing over it in circular motions. We're ironing out his wrinkles. To completely set the dough, freeze the regular cakesicles for 30 minutes and the Mickey ones for one hour. This ensures the dough retains its shape after removing from the mold. The Mickey cakesicles are more delicate, so it is best to peel them away a little at a time. Let the cakesicles come back to room temperature before dipping. Do not dip a cold cakesicle or the chocolate will crack. To dip, I have the chocolate in a deep deli container or mug and the ideal dipping temperature is 85 degrees. To achieve a smooth dip, your chocolate needs to be thinned out enough while being at that lower temperature. Gently wiggle the cakesicle and wipe the excess on the rim of the container. Since the Mickeys are heavy, I don't recommend double dipping them, only one dip does the trick. The strawberry shortcake design was my favorite tied with Mickey. Before dipping, I cut the corner with the scalloped cookie cutter to look like someone took a bite out of it. Since I used this cakesicle for the thumbnail, I wasn't able to record it being dipped, but it's the same exact way as the regular shape. This mistake right here is what your cakesicle will look like when the chocolate is too thick and not thinned out enough, resulting in what looks similar to elephant skin. You see all the flaws even more in bright lighting. To avoid this, make sure you add enough thinning agent, either coconut oil or Easy Thins, until you have a smooth and fluid dipping consistency, just like this, dipping at 85 degrees, and give it a double dip if you can still see through the chocolate. This is why dipping consistency makes such a difference. For the strawberry shortcake, I filled the bite area with white satinite fondant by fitting the piece with that same scalloped cookie cutter and pressed a small piece of pink fondant into a rectangle and attached the fondant on with edible adhesive. As for the strawberry crumble, I didn't have time to make my own, so I picked up these strawberry crunchies from my local Carvel and bumped up the color by adding strawberry jello powder. All you need to do is put some crunchies in a Ziploc bag with a couple spoonfuls of the jello powder and two drops of pink gel food coloring. This is Chef Master in the shade Rose Pink, and you want to mix it all together to achieve a vibrant strawberry color. I haven't tried this with homemade strawberry crunchies yet, but what I like about these are that the crumbs are small and not too coarse, which helps them to stick on. Now I'm taking edible adhesive and brushing on a generous layer. If you have used edible adhesive before for edible glitters, it needs to be spread super evenly so the fine glitters don't appear bumpy underneath. But the technique is so much different for these heavier crumbs, you can't use too much in this case. So feel free to add more if you need and sprinkle some on top. Then press to pack them in place, similar to applying sprinkles on a cake. I put the crumbs around the edges first since they are the hardest to apply and leave the front for last. The best part about the jello powder is that it fills up any empty spaces between the crumbs while adding a pop of color. Last, brush the edible adhesive on top and in between the scalped edges so the crumbs stick everywhere and sprinkle on your crumbs. Before picking your cakesicle up, allow the crumbs to dry, otherwise they may fall off. Our strawberry shortcake ice cream bar is complete. 
Now we need the signature waffle cone to go along with it. When piping the designs in chocolate, my favorite piping bags are these textured decorating bags, or you can use a sandwich bag. Trim the smallest hole off the corner to create thin, clean lines on your cone. And these bag ties are so helpful for maintaining pressure on the bag without having to constantly stop and adjust it. With piping, it's all about the chocolate consistency, which is why I don't add any thinning agent to this, because a stiffer consistency is needed to hold the shape of the lines. I pipe several diagonal lines and stop about 3 quarters of the way up, then cross the other set of diagonal lines to make the crisscross pattern on the cone. For Mickey and Minnie, it looks more complicated, but it's really not. We're piping the pattern the same, except also on the ears. The most challenging part is we want to make the line symmetrical, so you need to pipe the mirror image on the ears. If it confuses you, it helps to sketch it out on a piece of paper before doing this. The reason why I stop piping my lines about 3 quarters of the way is because it could get bumpy underneath when we make the ice cream drips after this. So instead of covering the entire cakesicle, leave some room on top of your cone for the ice cream. The fastest and easiest way to make your drips is with a lightweight squeeze bottle like this one. This is where your thinning agent is going to come in handy for the drip consistency. You can practice on a plate to get more comfortable. On the hot pink cone, I mixed some strawberries and cream sweet tooth fairy with pink chef master candy coloring. I alternate the lengths of the drips, then come around to outline the top and quickly fill in the center before it dries and immediately after add your favorite sprinkles. The key tip with the drips is to use a nice amount of pressure so the chocolate appears puffy. If your pressure is too light, the ice cream will be too flat and the lines from under the cone will be seen through the chocolate, especially if you're using a lighter color. The last cone is mint chocolate chip. For the color, I combine sweet tooth fairy melt and light green with green chef master and of course have some mini chocolate chips on the side to top it off. The cherry on top is such a cute finishing touch. All I did was roll a small ball of red fondant and attached it right on top of the cakesicle with red chocolate. Hold in place for a few seconds to secure and allow it to set before adding the stem. The stems are made from chocolate jimmies. Use a small brush to dip your chocolate and secure the jimmy with a tweezer. We don't have Mickey without Minnie, so I created a bow with this mold by pressing with red fondant and topped the bow with some red luster dust, then stuck the bow on with red melted chocolate. To complete the assortment of ice cream on the menu in the ice cream truck, I also had to include an orange creamsicle design. First I marbled my white chocolate with orange chef master by squirting from the bottle and swirling with a skewer, then dip your cakesicle straight in, gently shaking off the excess. I also molded mini orange popsicle decorations with the chocolate in a piping bag. I filled the mold only about halfway since this is a deeper mold. After filling, I shake it out to settle the chocolate and refrigerate them for about 15 minutes before removing. After those 15 minutes, peel them away from the mold. These decorative molds tend to be delicate, especially that these have the thin sticks. Just make sure to be careful when handling that. Go ahead and stick them on top of the cakesicle with melted chocolate. I arranged two popsicles on an angle to fit them nicely on there. And to finish the look with a touch of sparkle, I spray some edible gold glitter spray and mix edible paint with gold luster dust and very small amounts of Everclear vodka. Mix that together and see if it needs more liquid. Add a drop more if the painting consistency is too clumpy. 
I painted the sticks on the popsicle to give them a gold metallic finish. The other decorative mold was this acrylic ice cream cone mold that is more detailed and has two colors. For any detailed mold like this, I outline the border with a toothpick to drag the chocolate. And once the outline is in place, I fill the larger area of the cone with a brush. The toothpick trick prevents you from overlapping color in another part of the mold. Allow the chocolate to slightly set and cover the entire back with the color that you want to use. Feel free to fill with a piping bag for this part. Let the ice cream cone set for 15 minutes and you have the perfect decorations for your cakesicles. If there's any chocolate showing on the edge, shave it down with a toothpick to clean it up. Before sticking them on, I'm brushing on this blush pastel pink luster dust from Rokum brand. The pastel pink and purple luster dust from this brand are favorites in my collection. Brush a layer of chocolate behind the cone and place on front of the cakesicle. You can choose to leave the ice cream plain, but I had to add a little something. This is mint chocolate chip after all. I place chocolate sprinkles on with a dot of edible adhesive. Let's finish up our simple but classic popsicle with the pastel bright magenta luster dust. A little goes a long way and looks absolutely glamorous for ice cream. I hope you guys enjoyed this ice cream themed cakesicle tutorial whether you are a beginner or experienced with making them. It's always fun to learn something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to enter the sweet and stylish ice cream heels giveaway. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.